What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial and today I'm going to teach you about level design. It's going to be a rather simple tutorial, not too advanced. Uh, I'm going to design a level for you which will demonstrate how you can use many of Unity's features and tools to design a level for your game. Uh, you will learn about game objects, colliders, triggers, terrain, uh, lights, etc. Many more things but yeah you get you get the point uh, so we are going to start by adding terrain you can add a plane if you'd like or you could just stretch out a cube and flatten it uh, it it kind of depends on what you're going to use it for in my case I'm gonna need to lower and raise certain areas of the terrain uh, also paint multiple textures place multiple trees etc. Some of these things cannot be done on a plane or on a stretch chart cube so you're better off with terrain. Terrain is actually uh, the best thing to go with if you require such things. Okay so uh, oh yeah also I have imported two asset packages one is uh, the standard uh, character controller package and one is something called shantytown building 2 you can find this on uh, the unity asset store it's made by unity and they are giving it away for free this and many more so you can choose whatever you'd like <coughs> i'm going to mention a link for this asset in the description below but the rest of them I just need to mention their names because they're standard assets and I'm gonna be importing them from here so let's begin I'm gonna start by adding terrain uh, I'm not going to explain uh, just a minute yeah I'm not going to explain a whole lot about uh, terrain because the tutorial is not based on terrain it's based on level design so yeah okay this terrain is too big for my requirement I think 100 by 100 should be more than enough in fact I, I, I won't even be using 100 by 100 let's make it I don't know if 50 is too less or still too much. Hmm. Let's just leave it like this. It's okay. Okay, what next? Next, we need to raise the height of the terrain. Okay, for this you have to go to paint height and you can type in whatever height you want. Now, uh, what height you want depends upon, uh, well, depending upon other things. W one, of, one of those things that it depends on is uh, how much you want to lower certain areas. I don't know if what I just said made any sense or no. Uh, this is 24. Uh, it's it's too high. I'm gonna press 4 and click flatten. Now, when you click flatten, okay, check this out. I add these things. If I say, for example, press 2, flatten, the entire thing is reset and it goes to a height of 2. Now going to a height of 2 uh, basically means that you can reduce it up to that much. It's, it's not going to go any further. This uh, you can see the I guess you would call it depth. You can see how deep it's going. It's not going sorry. It's not going to go any deeper than this. However uh, say I change the height to 6 for example 
and then I try to lower the terrain you can see how deep it's going now so that that all depends upon what height you have set for your terrain in my case I think uh, 4 should be enough okay next I think we should add grass okay uh, for that I'm going to need to import the terrain assets package it's a standard package so you can you have you have the package with you okay so it's been imported now you go to paint you click on paint uh, texture and you can select which brush you want actually the brush brush won't uh, matter for your first texture because watch what happens I'm going I'm going to set the tiling to 3 by 3 see it spreads over the entire I guess it's because it's the the very first uh, texture that you're adding next we, we will be adding one more texture but I don't think I need to do that right now uh, first first let's create some mountains and create a small uh, sort of lake okay so to create mountains or hills or anything resembling that you have to click on uh, raise lower terrain then select what kind of brush you want select the brush size the opacity and I think I need to increase this yeah and then just start sculpting your terrain okay let's do okay so I I noticed this uh, because I I don't do a lot of uh, terrain sculpting it's level design I haven't gone very deep into it although I am interested in it I just haven't gone very deep into it uh, eventually I will but yeah uh, if you don't want this sort of thing to happen you can see this unexpected result uh, try to have sort of a steady hand like click from here and drag up to there but then do that fast and leave the mouse button uh, see even now I'm making mistakes like this uh, try it out eventually you'll get the hang of it it's sort of like painting you know the way how you painted that kind of result you're going to get okay I think this much is enough or should I do it around the entire no that's that's gonna waste time okay next hmm yes next let's create a lake okay so for that as well you have to you have to click on uh, raise or lower terrain and uh, in order to lower you have to hold down the shift key and then click so it goes down again you can even control how this works how much it lowers
I think this is fine. Next, we need to add water. So I'm going to import the basic water package because I don't have Unity Pro. Okay. So let's put the daytime water over here because we're going to start with uh, a daytime skybox. Okay. This looks okay, but it, it doesn't look very, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say original, but I can't think of another word. Usually you would see maybe a little dirt or sand or something around like at the edges. You don't usually see grass going into the water directly. So let's add dirt. We go back to the paint texture tool and add another texture. That's going to be this. No, dirt. Do the same thing. Okay. Now we can paint this around. We can paint this anywhere. And of course we can select whatever kind of brush we want. You can paint it like this. And you can also set the brush size, the opacity, the target strength. Uh, I usually just mess around with the brush size and opacity. I tried messing around with target strength. It it uh, it does help with uh, adding more detail, adding finer detail, uh, sort of polishing. It helps with with polishing the graphics. But I'm I'm not going to use it for now. Okay. So let's add dirt around the lake. Okay. That looks fine. If you don't want uh, like uh, a, a visible line between the grass and the dirt you can lower the opacity and make the brush size a little smaller and just add more finer detail over here. No, that's not fine. Just a minute. Yeah, you can add finer detail over here. Uh, anyways, you, you get the point. I'm not going to go around the entire lake. Uh, what next? Okay, I guess we can add our house now. Just a minute. Let me change the layout. Yeah, much better. Oh. Just for the sake of originality, uh, I'll add a little bit of dirt in a few places. It's totally up to you because you're the one designing the, the terrain. You can make it look the way you want. You must be having your own image in, in mind. So make what you like. Okay, uh, what is I going to do next? Yeah, I was going to add the house. Before adding the house, let's add let's let's add something simpler. The house is uh, it's a ready-made model. It's been designed and it's been created in some other application, probably 3ds Max or Maya or something. But and and uh, then it's been 
uh, exported from there and imported into Unity. Um, this is usually how it's supposed to be. When you talk about 3D models, you don't design the 3D models in Unity. It's Sorry about that. Uh, Unity is not meant for this purpose. It's not a 3D modeling software. Uh, but it, it does give you simple tools when you talk about modeling as simple as this creating a cube and all that stuff but if you want proper models then you have you have to design them in another application okay we are just going to add three walls and uh, then we will add a light source to it does this require a material I'm going to delete it anyways uh, it's okay we'll add a material to it okay all right so okay I think I mentioned earlier we will be adding a light to this uh, let's not do that right now because I'm going to add a skybox next and uh, the first uh, our first setting is going to be a sunny setting like like morning afternoon something like that so uh, a light light source is not really necessary over there well directional light is necessary to uh, kind of simulate the, the the sun sunshine whatever but uh, we don't require a light source in this area overall there should be a directional light to to give you overall light that's going to come all over the terrain like that this is necessary but uh, we don't require yeah we don't require a point light over here sorry that's the word I was looking for yeah we don't need to add a point light right now uh, we need to add this directional light to simulate morning okay what next the skybox okay so before I add the skybox, I need to add uh, the FPS character. Okay, these walls are a little small compared to our character, but it's okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, you might probably already know this, but in order to add a skybox, you need to uh, click Add Component, Rendering, and click Skybox. Wait, did I import the package? No. Sorry about that. So yeah, I'm going to import the skybox package. Sorry for having to import all these packages right now during the recording. I could have done it earlier, but then for certain beginners, it's easier like this if they actually see uh, the package being imported. Uh, there's there's no there's no room for confusion there.
Okay, so our Skybox package has been imported. I'm going to add that to our main camera. This one should be fine. Let's run the game and see what kind of Skybox this is. Hmm, not bad. Okay. Now, you must have noticed the scene view doesn't have the skybox. This is actually how, how it is. Uh, the skybox, you're, because you're adding it to the camera, so it uh, uh, shows up during runtime. Uh, but if you still would like to have the skybox uh, present in the scene view, it helps when you're adding certain details or it, it helps with, in many cases. Uh, adding fine details is one of those cases. Uh, so yeah, if you would like to have the skybox show up in, in the scene view, you can click on edit and project settings. And no, I think it was render settings. Yeah, sorry. Uh, click edit render settings. And here you'll have something called skybox material. You can select the skybox material that you want and it's going to show up. Okay. Now I'm going to add something that I haven't played around with a lot. Uh, this is the cloth object or cloth, whatever, it's, it's called a cloth. I haven't played around with it a lot, but it seems very interesting. You know what? I'll add this at the end. Uh, let me import the. Uh, let me place the that other building over here. Then let's not delete this. Let's keep this on the side. And uh, now let's. I think now we can bring the building in. Where's the front? There. Okay. Okay. What do I need to show you next? Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, this looks fine like this. Uh, I wanted to add cylinders and another cube and all but that's gonna look kind of silly so I will add it but uh, a little while later right now let's change this skybox to I guess dusk like the Sun is either setting or rising which one was it yeah Okay, so we've got the sun in that direction. Now let me show you something with our directional light. Because the sun is in that direction, so you would want it to look like the light is coming from there in this direction. 
you don't want it to look like it's coming from there because uh, well that doesn't look real so let's rotate our directional light Okay, I don't remember, but I guess the uh, position of the light doesn't matter. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not sure. Don't take my word on that. Uh, the rotation, however, does matter. So, okay. From this angle, we can barely see the sun, yet it's still bright. So, we want it to be a little more dark. I think this should look okay. Okay, uh, let's run the game and see. Oh, sorry. I forgot to change the skybox in our main camera. Now let's run the game. Yep. Looks oh oops. Sorry, I haven't added a collider to the water, so just fell straight through. Hmm, what's wrong? Oh, okay. Yep, this looks pretty good. Let's see what it's like over here. As you can see, it's more darker on this side and lighter on this side. For some reason, my system seems to be slowing down. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Uh, I need to close Unity and open it again. So let me save this as a level.
Okay, it's not a whole lot better now, but what's wrong with this? Okay, I am very sorry about that. I have no idea what went wrong. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's okay now. Let's rotate this directional light a little bit more. So it becomes a little more dark. Because we really want it to look like the sun is setting yeah I, I think that's that's good yep it's okay now what next lights yes I have to show you lights okay uh, we are going to start with one light uh, that that will be a point light and we are going to place this light over here Let's take it more closer. Okay. Uh, now let's add a simple script to this light. You'll have to excuse me, my system is really slow for some reason. Okay. So, we are going to create a static boolean uh, variable call it light on and initially set it to false and in the update method we'll write if light on so it's constantly going to be checking whether light on is true or not writing if light on just like this is the same as writing if light on double equals to true Uh, okay, so if it is on, then game object dot light dot enabled equals true. So, uh, well, initially the light is going to be off. Uh, what's going to happen is we are going to place a trigger over here, and as soon as our player enters that trigger, while he's within the trigger, if he presses E, then the light will go on. If uh, he's not in the trigger, 
pressing E is not going to do anything. Okay, let's add the trigger now. We just create an empty object and <coughs> add uh, a box collider to it and let's just enlarge this collider uh, I think this much is enough Okay, now let's add a script to this collider. Sorry, to this object. We'll call this light switch. Light switch script. And we can call this uh, object light switch. okay here we will create uh, a public boolean variable called trigger active or is trigger active this will tell us whether the player has uh, stepped into the trigger or not or sorry has activated the trigger or not so we are going to call on collision no sorry on trigger stay not on trigger enter because we don't want to find out whether the uh, player has entered the trigger or not we want to find out whether the, the player is within the trigger currently or not so on trigger stay I think on trigger stay is called every frame that the player is within that trigger uh, first of all is trigger active equals true next mm, if call which is our collider object dot game object sorry our collider parameter uh, if call dot game object dot tag is equal to player we'll set the player tag right now then okay we'll add this also here okay then we add the if condition over here if input dot get key down key code dot e then light script dot what is the variable's name light on light on equals true See, the reason why I made that uh, variable static was so that I can access it from outside. Uh, if it's not static, I don't think it's going to show up in that menu in the first place. Mm, what next? I think... I think we're done. Sorry about that guys. Uh, I had a small confusion because of which uh, well no the confusion is not what caused the problem. My memory filled up and the recording just stopped. Like literally it filled up because I'm using uh, never mind. Uh, so yeah uh, where was I? I'm actually going to join both the videos together later. Uh, so let's see how well it comes out. Uh, at the end of the last video, I was here uh, just double checking.
if we are done okay now I am going to well let's delete these two for now okay also uh, before we test whether that is working or not uh, I may have missed this in the previous portion you have to set the tag for the player object set the tag to player because our script here is checking where here the script is going to check whether this object has the tag player or not and if we don't set the tag then that if uh, well this none of this is going to run if we don't set our uh, objects tag to player okay now let's see if it is actually working or not wait before we do that what have I attached the script to this okay so I'm going to keep this selected so that uh, I can see the script over here and the moment we enter the trigger that checkbox should get checked okay it has it is now checked so when I press E there you go the light is switched on so what we can do now is make duplicates of this light and place it in various places uh, this, the reason why I made a duplicate of this light and I didn't create a new light object is because this light has the settings that we require its uh, light component is disabled and it has the script attached so what's gonna happen is when we switch on that that one light it's not just one it's all three that will go on okay uh, for some of you maybe only two lights will uh, start or two lights will go on even though you have placed three over here if you do have that problem it it's probably because of your quality settings what you need to do is click edit project settings quality and select fantastic either select fantastic or uh, just change the pixel light count this uh, basically means how many lights will be well not active but how many lights will be shown like uh, I have set this to 8 but usually the preset of good it has 2 pixel count pixel light count so watch what happens when I switch on the lights now Keep in mind there are three light objects. This light doesn't go on. Further on, whatever, how many other lights I'm going to place on the screen? Uh, screen, sorry, in the scene, uh, they probably won't go on. If they do, then well, out of all of them, only two will go on because two has been selected over here. If I set this to eight, I can place up to eight lights I think that's how it works uh, do correct me if I'm wrong there okay what next okay just for fun's sake we'll add sorry we'll add Uh, we'll add a few cylinders
I'll increase the size of this cylinder and then just copy it. This one here and this one here and place another one here. And now we can add a cube over these cylinders. Let's just stretch it out first. Okay, uh, I think I'll add the same material that I added to these walls. Where is that material? Okay, let's add something else say this and let's add one more light two more lights one over here and one over here Okay, what can we add next? Yeah, now let's add the cloth. You'll have to excuse me because I don't know a lot about this this particular object. Uh, I haven't done a lot of research on it. It seems pretty interesting, so I'm going to try it out at some point. Uh, just haven't done it so far. I don't want the cloth to fall so I think it's better if I put... What happens if I enlarge it? No. This is going to mess with the detail of the cloth because these the mesh is not becoming more detailed. It's still the same. Just stretching out. Okay, no problem. Let's just go with it. And we'll add this fabric material to the cloth. Mm, maybe change this to 10, 10 and this also. Hmm. Let's see what it looks like.
Uh, I think it fell. No. For some reason it stretched. No, I don't think it stretched either. I, I think I just calculated it wrong. Okay, let's reduce the size. Okay. This cloth actually does respond like when you hit it, see you can see changes in it. I just haven't understood fully how how it works. Uh I will eventually. Just like a plane, you cannot see see the the cloth from the other side. Let's add one light here as well. Okay, so I guess that's it. Okay, I can change this water as well. Make it... I'll use night, night water instead. Oops. Okay. Uh, I guess... Yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. Um... Do check out, uh, do check out these tutorials as well. Uh, visit my channel for more videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.